It's a Baikal, it's a 2013. We currently updated the control to a Siblic 15 touchscreen controller. This machine model is a 31090. What that stands for, the nine is for 90 metric tons. This comes in at just under 100 ton machine, 10 foot long. Uh, some of the features this machine has is your American Wheel of hydraulic clamping, very cool system. It's got your Y1, Y2 RAM. It's got X, R, and Z1, Z2 fingers, all servo driven. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and move some of these features on this machine, then we'll kind of go over the control next. That's just moving the back gauge. Uh, I'm gonna just go ahead and do an X movement. That was a Z1, Z2 movement. Going to 10 inches. There's your 10. I'm gonna go ahead and bring the ram down. And now I'm gonna go ahead and add another step so you can see the back gauge in the process of that. I'm gonna do a 90 degree again. Now I'm gonna change it to a 12 inch on the second band. And then I go back one and start. Okay. Okay, we're gonna go over the Siblic 15. As you can see here, I got it pulled up where you got manual movement, new program, current program, call a program up. Right now, I'm gonna go into my new program. I'm gonna go ahead and do a numerical program first. Okay, first thing we're gonna go over, what type of material are we gonna bend? Typically, we do steel. We can select aluminum. See, we're gonna see two changes. We see a change here in aluminum. If we go back to steel, we see a change with our kilogram dial. It goes with the, how, how it bends the material and the force it takes. For next step is gonna select our tooling. The tooling I want that I got on my die now is the .63V opening. This is the opening here. We wanna make sure that the thickness matches our V opening. Typically, what we, a rule of thumb is seven times the um, thickness of our material, we need to have our V die opening. So it has enough room to go in here and not cause extra force or damage to our person or our tooling or the machine. So always very critical to check and make sure that we got the right tooling selected for what we're bending. Okay, anyways, we got that. And we got our um, selected wheela punch. Now we're ready to start going down. So right here we can select our degree of angle. Uh, for instance, this machine, we typically do air bending. So what we have is an 85 degree punch and die. So what happens is it goes past 90, you know, like 83, then it springs up into a 90 degree bend. Um, kind of in the older machines, still some processes need it for certain materials. They have 90 degree tooling, but you're triple the um, tonnage force to do that. So you're asking a lot more risk, because if you over travel, obviously all that force goes into the machine or the, the tooling, um, you have hazards there. A little safer, um, with this new technology of CNC press brakes, we can do the air forming. This is a recommended way for nowadays to do it, especially on this machine. Anyways, so we can go ahead and select 145 if we wanted to. Um, right now I want to do a 90 degree bend though, so I'm gonna put it back, I just wanted to show you that. Now we can go ahead and set our back gauge to whatever flange length we flange length we want to bend. So we're gonna put it to eight inches. This right here is our R axis. This means our back gauge will rise or lower to contact our material for our accuracy. Uh, this is already calculated for it, knowing what our height of our die is and everything else. Um, we can change that if we want to. Um, I choose not to, but I'll show you that. So if we wanted to go to three inch, we just type three inch and push check, and that would allow that R axis to come up a little more, or we can obviously go down with that. 
Um, same thing here, this is our Z1, Z2. This is our back gauge fingers. This machine has it, where fingers move independently horizontally. We kind of will have part that in the video too. We'll show you that moving. So we can simply set that and change that here. On either side, we got our um, Z1 and Z2 fingers. We're changing our Z1 right here. And kind of moving on, now we got our retract. And what retract is, for instance, we have our back gauge, right? We got material. If I kept my back, back gauge right here and I bent right here, what's gonna happen is gonna take that back gauge and put force to it and uh, cause some major damage. So on certain parts, and you can see a picture here even, you can see that we want to back away from our part before we make the bend. That's what we, that's when we want to put a um, retract into our machine. And we need to know the distance we need to travel back out of the road, right? Um, this is our mute point. Um, we can set that. That's when it comes down. It'll slow down before it starts our bend into our material. This is our length, the material we're gonna put in. Um, let's just say it's a nine inch part. So we got our nine inch part, the mute point. And then um, for on our brake, we can set up our fingers the distance from the left side over here, the distance we want our fingers to line up for our bending. We're gonna put 25 inch. This is a tonnage force. This right here is the um, speed, our, uh, our pressing or bending speed going down. We're gonna jet, we can change that. Or we can go ahead and turn it off. So same here, this is our bending speed going up. Um, and also have an option to dwell time. Uh, and on these controls, when you'd wanna use that, there's certain materials, like most common one I can think of right off the bat, would be hard ox, maybe some stainlesses. They're just so hard that you gotta bend, you gotta stay down in that bend for a certain amount of time so it actually takes form and has time to form. If you go down and go back up quick, it, it'll just spring right open and won't have the correct bend. So we have that option, we can go ahead and turn that off. And this machine has CNC crowning, we can go ahead and set our crown. So if we notice we're getting 90s on the ends where the cylinders are, but we're a little off in the center, we can adjust that up or down. On this screen here we have, you can see two different methods of where the back gauge hits. So our material we can hit here in the front, or we can hit here up on the top where we can rest our material on, on the finger and help us to support it a little easier on, on longer flange parts. But that's kind of the um, way to start a program. Now if you want to add, one thing we got to do is actually, I forgot, is the .72 is our thickness we're going to bend. So yeah, I got to check your thickness. Um, now if you want to add a step, now we're going to go ahead and insert a step. So now we can go ahead and go down through here. We can change our degree. We can change that to 10 inch flange. So just do the same things you want to do or change any of these methods that may need to be changed on that next step of your band. So very simple, very easy to use. And here's what we, even another little thing I'm gonna show you too. This is what we call easy bend because it's just gonna ask you the simple stuff. So we already have our, we got our punch and die already selected. We just wanna double check and make sure that's right. Come down, we wanna select to 90. I want a four inch flange length. I can change my R, boom. I'm already set and ready to bend apart, that easy. Buy the most common screen if you wanna just do a one off part. Okay, now we're gonna do another program. Now we're gonna do, go into graphical. Now we gotta select our tools once again. Selected, selected, and now I just tap it, boom. I got my shape, got my shape. I can set my angle to 90, boom. I can go ahead and check this. I want it to be 145 actually, that one. I wanna change my length to six inches. And then I can either select, well, sorry, I can go ahead and tap this, and I can manually select my bands by tapping them, or I can go ahead and automatically let it do it for me. And now I just go ahead and watch my bands and make sure there's no crashes. I can go ahead and do this. And if I'm done, I can go ahead and do that now too. It's a very simple, easy way to program this machine. We're just showing the back gauge right now.
Very accurate. Very smooth running machine. I think you guys can hear how quiet this machine is running. I'm talking by it. Very quiet machine, very smooth running machine.